Hey guys, in this video we're going to dive into Ruby on Rails, which is a powerful framework for building web applications using the Ruby programming language. So I'm going to cover most of the fundamentals of Rails while building a simple blog application. So we'll cover things like routing, controllers, models, views, and more. Now we're going to be using Windows and there's a really simple way to get Rails up and running and that's with Rails Installer all right, at railsinstaller.org. And this includes the Ruby programming language, the Rails framework, Ruby Gems, which is a package manager for Ruby, as well as Bundler, which is used for managing those packages or those gems. All right, so we're also going to be using something called Git Bash. Okay, we're going to download Git for Windows, which is a version control system. We're not going to really focus on using uh, Git. The reason that I want to download it is because it comes with a command line tool called Git Bash. Uh, which is really helpful and some things I found with uh, using rails in the command line weren't really working too well in the standard Windows command prompt and they do work in using this so we're gonna download that as well alright so let's start with this okay this is at git-scm.com and we're just gonna click this download for Windows okay we'll go ahead and save that and we'll open that up Okay, we'll click run. Okay, and this is just a just a standard Windows installer. We're just going to click next. Uh, let's see, we'll just keep that default. Uh, for this option here, I'm going to choose the last one, which is use Git and optional Unix tools from the Windows command prompt. Click next, and then the rest of them we're just going to keep as default. All right, we'll let that install. Now I am going to be moving kind of fast because I want to uh, I want to get to cover everything in, in a um, uh, decent amount of time. So just try to bear with me. All right, now let's uncheck the view release notes. And if we click launch git bash, you'll see that it'll open up a window. And it's just like the Windows command prompt. Uh, we just have uh, some optional uh, or some additional Unix tools as well. All right, uh, I'm not going to get into this right yet. I just want to get everything installed. All right, so let's go to railsinstaller.org, and we're going to go down here, and let's grab the Windows. I'm going to get the, right now, Ruby 2.2 is the latest version, so we're going to grab that. Okay, and let's see. I think I already downloaded it earlier, so let's just open that up. Here it is, Rails Installer. All right, so this is just another uh, Windows installer. We're going to accept the terms here. And it's going to install it in the C drive by default. That's fine. And it also installs Git, which we already have, but I'm just going to leave that checked. And then you also want to leave this checked. It's going to add the executables for Ruby in your environmental path. So just click Install. Uh, let's see, it already installs, on, I mean, it already exists on my system, so let me just delete that folder real quick. You guys won't have this issue, it's just because I already had it installed. All right. And this could take a minute or two, so I'm just going to pause it, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so that's all set. Now you'll see there's a checkbox that says configure git and SSH when installation has completed. We'll click finish and then it's going to just open up a, a Windows command prompt and you'll see that I already have my git info here. It may prompt you for your name and email address. Okay, if it does, just go ahead and fill that in. All right, now I'm going to close this out because I don't want to use the standard Windows command prompt. I'm going to open up the git bash program. All right, so if you don't have an icon on your desktop, um, what you can do is it actually adds uh, a context menu item. So when you install Rails, it creates this sites folder in your C drive. All right, I already actually have some stuff in there, but you, I believe you'll just have the to-do sample app. All right, now what I'm going to do is right click and we can go to git bash here and that'll open up a command line in that folder. All right, so let's just make sure that everything is installed. So we'll say Ruby V. Okay, so you can see I have version 2.2.4. Let's check Rails V. OK, 
okay, 4251. And let's also check uh, gem V, so Ruby gems. And then we should also have bundler. All right, version 1.11.2. So everything's installed now. And what we want to do is generate uh, an application. Okay, we want to generate a Rails app. So to do that, just make this a little bigger. To do that, we can say Rails new and then the name of the application. All right, and I'm just going to call this simple blog. Okay, so that's going to create all these files and folders. Now, you may or may not get this error. Uh, this has to do with an SSL certificate. Okay, so to, to fix this, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up that sites folder and go into uh, simple blog, which is what we just created. And then I'm going to open up uh, right here the gem file. So let's see. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Sublime, my Sublime text editor, and then add that folder to it as a project. All right, so let's see. Sites and simple blog, select folder. All right, so let's open up the gem file, and you'll see up here we have the source HTTPS Ruby gems. I'm going to just take the S off, all right, and just use HTTP, and that should fix that issue. All right, so once you do that, you want to go back and just run bundle install. Uh, whoops, we got to go into the folder. So CD simple blog and bundle install. All right, and that should get everything set up. All right, what it's doing is it's installing the dependencies. Now, if you if you're familiar with Node.js, there's a lot of similarities here. Uh, the gem file can kind of be thought of as the package.json file. Okay, you define your gems in here, including Rails itself, um, and then you can run bundle install just like you would run npm install with Node, and that'll get it all set up for you. All right, so now that that's all set, we want to run Rails server. Okay, you can either run Rails server or you can run Rails S for short, and that's going to start up the Webbrick server which is uh, a dev server that comes with rails all right and it's going to open it up on port 3000 by default so if we go over to our browser and we put in http localhost 3000 you'll see a, a welcome page like this all right so this is how we know that everything is installed and up and running so we're now ready to start developing all right so let me just close these out now the first thing that i want to do is generate a controller all right so if you're not familiar with mvc it stands for model view controller and each each one of those things has a specific uh, task or a specific purpose um, controllers are used basically to to look at the url and decide what to load decide um, what method in that controller to load it's also responsible for talking to the model in the view all right, the model is responsible for dealing with uh, the database or whatever API, um, whatever data storage you're using, all right, um, to do inserts or selects or whatever it may be. And then views are used for the user interface, okay, templates and, and what the user sees in the browser. All right, so when we look at the folder structure here, the most important folder to look at is the app folder because that has the entire MVC structure. We have a controllers folder, we have a, a models folder, and a views folder. All right, so in the controllers, you'll see there's an application controller file, and that's the, the core controller. Every controller that you create is going to extend this one. Now, in the views folder, there's a layouts folder here, and then application.html.erb. All right, all of our views are going to have this HTML ERB. Okay, the ERB extension is embedded Ruby. If we look at that, that is the, the HTML that's going to wrap around all of our, our inner views. All right, we have the doc type, the head tags, all that. And you can see Ruby has its own way of um, including style sheets and JavaScript tags. Uh, and down here, you'll see this yield. This is where all the views that we create will be output. All right, so whatever is in this file is going to show up on every single page. So you don't have to have 
in all of your views, you don't have to include the whole structure with the head tag and all of that, all right, which is really nice. Now, the other um, folder that's really important here is the config, because that's where we have our routes. You see this routes.rb file. And I'm going to go over routes after we create our first controller. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have one command line that, or one terminal that's running the WebBrick server. We could stop this and then generate our controller, but I want to leave this running. So I'm going to just open up another, uh, another terminal window. Okay, so simple blog, git bash here. All right, so we'll just let the server run. I'm just going to move it out. All right, and then from here, what we want to do is generate a controller. Okay, we could create the files we need manually, but this makes it much easier. So to do that, we'll say Rails, and we could either write out generate or use G. And we want to specify that we want to generate a controller, and then the name of that controller which in this case will be uh, posts. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. All right, so now it tells us all the stuff it created. Okay, if you look, it created a um, posts underscore controller file in the controllers folder. It created a uh, posts folder inside the views. It created uh, a helper, post helper inside the helpers folder. Um, it created some coffee scripts. We don't really need to pay attention to that. And also its own um, SCSS file. All right. So if we look in controllers and we go to postcontroller.rb, you'll see that we have a class called postcontroller and it's extending that application controller. All right. Like I said, all your controllers should extend that. And it uses this um, less than to, to do that. Now what I want to do here is I want to create uh, a method called index. Now in Ruby we define functions using the def keyword and then we'll say index and then end. All right. Now if this looks weird to you, let's say you're you're used to uh, JavaScript or PHP, this would be the same as doing function index just like that. All right. So this is just the the Ruby way of doing things. And it may be a little strange at first, but it's actually really nice. Uh, Ruby focuses on trying to, to look like the English language. Okay, You don't see a lot of punctuation and curly braces and all that. It tries to look very, uh, just, just very normal, I guess. All right, uh, not like a programming language. So let's go ahead and save that. And then what we want to do is if we look in the views folder, we have a post folder and we're just going to create a new file. And we're going to save it as index.html.erb. All right, for embedded Ruby. And this is going to be our index template. So I'm going to just put in an h1 here, and let's just say index. And we'll save that. Now, what we want to do is set this view to be our home view when we visit this page. We want to get rid of this landing page. So we need to create a route. So we're going to go back into... Uh, config routes.rb and right here is where we can specify the what we want to use for the root so I'm gonna just uncomment this and what this says right here is it's gonna look at the welcome controller and then it's gonna look at the index view or the index method alright now we don't have a welcome controller we're gonna change this to uh, posts alright we want the post index to be uh, to be the root. All right, so let's save that. And then we're going to go back over here and reload. And there we go. We're now seeing the index template or the index view. All right, when I say templates and views, I mean the same thing. Now I want to create another controller called pages controller. And that'll be responsible for, let's say, if we want an about page or, um, I don't know, a, um, a, a terms and conditions page or something like that, just a static page. So let's go back to our command line here, and we're going to say uh, Rails G controller pages. All right, so that created a pages controller. And in here, what I'm going to do is create uh, a method called about. So def about end. Okay, and we'll save that. 
and it should have created a views folder as well. You can see we have this pages folder and I'm going to create a new file in here and save it as about.html.erb and let's put an h1 in here and we'll just say about and save. Now let's say we want this to show up when we go to slash about. All right, if we try to go there right now, we're going to get a routing error because it doesn't have a route for that. So if we go to our routes RB and if you look at this example here, this is a regular route. So I'm going to just uncomment that and we want this to just be about and it's going to be a get request. That's why you see the word get here and then we want it to go to the pages controller and the about view. All right, so let's save that. Go back, reload, and now we get about. All right, so this is a, a normal route. This one here is is for the root. Now, if we want to send dynamic values to uh, a view from a controller, we can do that pretty easily. So in about here, in the function about or the method, we're going to say, uh, let's see, we can use the at symbol title. And we'll set that to about us. All right, and then we'll save that. And then we'll go to the about template. We'll get rid of this. And we're going to use this syntax here. All right. And that'll be the title. And then we need to close it. All right, so this is the syntax for adding variables. So let's save it, reload, and we get about us. Okay, so we can send data from the controller to. Um, to the, the view really easily. All right, we may want to say content and we'll say this is the about page and then in the view we'll just put in a paragraph and let's see, we'll just grab that and this will be content. All right. So I'm going to close up the pages controller. We're not going to really be working with that anymore. I just wanted to show you an example of creating a regular route and sending data to the view from the controller. Now with our posts, we're going to need a lot of, of views and we're going to need a lot of methods. Okay, so we're going to need an index, which we already have. Okay, we're going to need a show view and a show method, which will take care of um, showing the individual post. All right. And the index, by the way, will be a list of posts. Then we also have the new. We're going to need new, which will show the form to add a new post. We're going to need edit, which will show the edit form. Um, destroy, which will be our, our delete function, our delete method. So there's quite a few things we need to do. Now, instead of doing all of those routes manually, what we can do is we can claim posts to be a resource. All right, so right here you see this resource products. I'm going to go ahead and just uncomment that and then we're going to change this to posts. All right, and then we're going to save it and let's go to our command line. And there's a command we can do called rake routes. Oops. And what that does is it shows us all the routes for our application. So you can see that we have our, our root we have our about and then all of these posts routes. OK, and this happened because just from that resources post line that created all these routes for us. All right. So we have index create, which is uh, going to be the post request that the form gets submitted to to add a post. New is again the form to add a post edit show uh, update, which will take care of updating the post and then destroy which will take care of deleting it. All right. So you want to include posts as a resource. All right. So now what we want to do is go to uh, let's see. Let's go to our post controller and we're going to say def new. OK, so this is going to take care of um, our form, our new form. OK, so we're going to have to create a route. I'm sorry, a view. So let's go into views and then posts and we're going to create a new file and we're going to save it as new dot HTML dot ERB. All right. And let's put a heading. We'll say add post. 
and let's save it. And now we should be able to go to slash uh, slash posts slash new. And there it is. Add post. Okay. So since we have that route, we have um, that view. That's what's going to show up. All right. Now let's create a form here. Now I'm going to paste this in. This uses Ruby syntax. All right. And it uses a form helper. So we have this form for helper. And we, this is for a post. And then we'll say do. And then this F can be used down here to create our labels, F dot label and our fields. Okay. So we're going to have a title, which is going to be a text field. And we'll also have a text, uh, which will be um, text area. Okay. So a title and a text field. Actually, you know what? Let's change text to body. I think that makes more sense. All right, so a title and a body and then down here we have our submit. So let's go ahead and save that. And if we reload, you can see we have a little form. Now I'm just going to edit this form for area uh, a little bit. I want to after post put a comma and then we're going to say URL and we want this to go to uh, posts underscore path. All right. Now what this is going to do is it's going to submit to our create method. All right. So let's save that and then we'll go into our post controller and let's say def create. All right. And for now, let's just do uh, render plane. And let's say params post dot inspect. All right, so let's see what happens if we submit this form. Okay, I'll reload and let's just say test title, test body and save post. All right, so it's getting submitted to this create method. And what this line does is it just gives us basically an object with the title and the body. So we can see that we're getting that data sent through. All right. Now, this obviously this isn't what we want it to do. Um, I just wanted to give you an example and show you that it is submitting to create. Now, before we can think about submitting data and saving it in the database. And by the way, the default database that Rails uses is SQL Lite, which is a file based database. All right. I'm not going to get too much into uh, SQL Lite itself, because no matter what database you use, everything here is pretty much the same. Okay, you can define your database inside of uh, config. Let's see, config database YML. You'll see we're using SQL Lite, and you can use MySQL. You can use um, Postgres uh, and a number of other databases. But the actual models and all that isn't going to be too different depending on the database you use, at least for the kind of stuff that we're doing. All right, so uh, we need to create a model. Let me just go back and just close these out. So we need to create a model in order to uh, save our posts. So let's open up the terminal or the command line here, and we're going to do uh, Rails G model. Okay, we want to generate a model. And we're going to call it post. All right. Now, a good practice is to use uh, plural for your controllers. So posts and then singular for your models. Okay. So we're going to use post. And then let's say we want it to have a title field, which will be a, a string. And let's do body, which will be text. All right. So let's go ahead and run that. And that should create a model file for us. OK, so now you can see we have models post.rb. Now we created a model and it also created a migration file. All right. So you'll see right here DB migrate and then it has a timestamp create posts. OK, it created this file, but it didn't actually create the post table yet. In order to do that, we need to run the migration file. All right. And if we take a look at the migration file, it's going to be in DB migrate and you'll see it right here create post so it's going to create a post table with a title and a body all right and a timestamp so to run this we have to we have to run a command called rake db 
colon migrate. Okay, once we run that, it'll actually create the table. All right, so we get a success message here. So now we can go back to our controller and proceed. So let's do, I'm going to create a variable called post, and we'll set that to post, which represents the model, and then dot new. All right, and then we want to pass in the parameters. So this right here. All right, so let's save that. And then let's see what happens if we try to submit this. Okay, so it's giving us an error that says forbidden attributes. Now, the reason we're getting this is because we didn't define any special fields that a post is allowed to have. All right, and we need to. We don't want to just let anything um, be entered as a post. So we want, to, we want to let the system know that we want a title and a body. So to do that, we're going to add in a method down here. and We're going to label it as private, so it can only be accessed from this class. And we'll say def, and let's call it post underscore params. All right. And then inside here, we're going to say params dot require post dot permit. And let's say title and body. Okay, it's only going to be able to take in a title and a body. So up here where we just passed in params post, now we're just going to pass in the name of that method, which is post params. All right. Now we need to call the save method for it to actually save. So we're going to say post dot save. All right. And then we just want to redirect to that post. So redirect underscore two post. All right. And then what that's going to do is it's going to load uh, the show view. All right. So we haven't created that yet. So let's go up here and let's see, we'll say def show. And all we want to put in here for now is post equals from the post model. We want to call find. All right. And in here we want to just pass in the ID from the URL. All right. So params colon ID and that'll get that single post. All right. So we'll save that. Now the show doesn't have a, a view. So let's create that. So inside views page uh, views posts, we're going to create a file and save it as show dot HTML dot ERB. All right. And in here, let's put an H2. OK, this is going to be the title. So we want to use this tag syntax and do at post dot title. OK, then under that we'll have the body. All right, so let's save it. And now we should be all set to submit it and then get redirected to the show view. All right, so let's just reload this and let's say post one. This is post one and save. All right, so now you can see we're redirected and we can see our post. And if we take note of the URL, it's post slash and then the ID, which is one. All right, so that's working out good. Now we want to be able to list all of our posts on the, the main post page. So on our index. So what we'll do is go to our post controller, go into index. And from here, all we have to do is create a post variable and set it to post our post model dot all. All right, and that'll get them all save that. And then let's go into our index view. And from here, let's change this to. Uh, so actually, we'll just say. Blog posts. All right, now we need to loop through the posts. So we're going to do this syntax. We're going to say take that post variable that we passed in and then do dot each and then say do 
and in here we'll pass in post, which can be anything, uh, but post makes sense. All right, now notice there's no equal sign. That's because this isn't an output. All right, we only use the equal sign if we're outputting some kind of variable. All right, and then down here, we have to make sure that we end the loop. And then in the middle, let's put an H3. And here we'll do post.title. And then we'll do post.body. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Reload. And there's our post one. All right. Now I want to make this look a little better, and I also want to have some navigation. So we're going to use Bootstrap. So let's grab the uh, CDN for Bootstrap. Okay, so I'm going to grab this CSS link and let's go into lay, uh, views, layouts, and then our application HTML. And what we can do is we can actually use this syntax, this style sheet link tag. So let's see, we'll copy that, paste that in, and then let me just grab this again. And let's see, we don't need all this. And then we'll just paste that in there. All right, so I think that should work. Let's save it, reload, and now you can see that Bootstrap is enabled. All right, so let's go to getbootstrap.com, and then we'll go to getting started, examples, and this starter template right here. I'm going to do a control U, and I just want to grab this nav. Yeah, we'll just grab this nav. And we're going to put that right in here. All right, and let's just edit this a little bit. We're going to get rid of the navbar fixed top. I'm going to change this navbar inverse to navbar default, which will make it light. Project name, let's say simple blog. And let's see, get rid of that class. Actually, there's a, a link helper that we can use with Rails, so we don't even need the A tags here. All right, what we're going to do is put in link underscore two, and this is going to be to the home. So this will be the text that displays. We just want it to say home, and then we want it to go to home underscore path. All right, so this isn't going to work yet. What, do, what we need to do for this home path to work is we're going to go back to the routes, config routes, and let's see. Actually, no, I think that that should work. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it out. All right, so that's the home path. Um, I want to have a link on the other side of the nav bar to add posts. So I'm going to copy this UL and paste that in and then just add a class here called navbar write and this is to add posts so let's say create post and let's see we should be able to use new underscore post underscore path all right so let's save that reload uh, undefined local variable home okay so home path isn't working so I think if we go to our routes and let's go right here and we're gonna put a comma and then say as colon home all right and let's do this about we'll say as colon about Okay, let's save that. Okay, so now, now the home link works. If I click create post, that takes us to the post new. All right, now see how this is too close to the edge here. We're just gonna wrap that in a container div. So let's go to our main application layout and we'll say div class container around the yield. Okay, save that and there we go. 
All right, so let's add another post. Okay, save. And there we go. And if we go to our home page, you can see that it's listing both posts. Awesome. I just want to add some uh, classes to these forms to make it look better. So let's go to views, posts, new. And we're going to go to this text field and I'm just going to wrap parentheses around this because we want to add in a second parameter here, which will be an object and we'll say class and then set that to uh, form control, which is a bootstrap class. All right, and then we'll do the same thing down here. Okay, so uh, body form control. All right, so save that. Okay, so the form looks a little better. Let's do the button as well. So this submit right here, we can just add in some parentheses. Class and we'll add btn and then btn dash primary. Okay, so now we have a nice button. All right, now uh, I want to add some validation here. So to do that, we can use our model file. So let's go to models post. And in here, we're going to say validate. And we want the title. We want it to be required. So we'll say presence true. All right. And then let's say length. And we're going to set minimum of five. All right, so that'll be required and has to be five characters. So let's save that. Now, if I go and try to create a post and we just, oh, that shouldn't work. Um, oh, 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 we need to go to our controller and then where we have the post save, we want to do an if right here. Okay, so we'll say if post save, then we want to redirect. And then let's put an else. Okay, so else, then we just want to re-render the form. So render new. All right, so now let's go back and try to submit. And you'll see that it just re-renders. Now we want to have an error message telling us what's going on. All right, so let's go to our new view, which is the form. And we're going to go right below the form tag here. And I'm just going to paste this in. All right. So what we're doing is we're, we're doing this if statement that says if post errors dot any, then we want to uh, loop through the messages. And we can do that with this line here. And then we're just going to output the message wrapped in an alert div. All right. So let's save that. And we'll go and try that again. Just submit. Uh, what's this? Oh, okay. So uh, we need to, it doesn't know what this is post. So we'll go back to our controller and go to new right here. And we can just say post equals post dot new. Okay. That should work. All right. So if we click save, you'll see we get our errors title can't be blank title is too short all right so validation is pretty simple in rails so on our index page we want this we want these to link to uh to the the full article or the full post so let's add a link we'll go to our index view and i'm also going to wrap a div around these and let's give it a class of well, and then we'll add a button here or a link. So we'll use that link to. So link to, and then this will just say read more. 
and then it's going to go to the post path and then we just want to pass in that post variable and then let's add a class of btn btn default okay reload and if i click read more it takes us to that post page all right so things are coming along I know this is a really long video, so hopefully you guys are still with me. Um, pause the video if you want, take a drink of water. Um, I know this is this is kind of long, so the next thing I want to do, I just want to be able to cover everything and, and get you guys um, able to create a CRUD application. All right, so now what we want to take care of is uh, editing. Okay, we want to be able to edit our posts. So on the show page here. Let's create an edit link. All right, so let's go to show HTML. And down here, let's put an HR. All right, so this is going to be uh, a link to edit. So let's do link to edit. And we'll say edit underscore post path. And we want to pass in that at post variable. And then let's add a class. All right. So right now that's not going to work, okay? Because we don't have that, we don't even have an edit action or method. So let's go in our controller and let's see, we'll go right here and say def edit. All right, and we need to get the individual posts just like we did on the show page. So I'm just going to copy this and paste that in here, save it, and then let's create an edit view inside our post folder. So edit.html.erb. All right, now this is going to be pretty much the same as the new. So I'm going to just copy this. Okay, and we'll just change this to edit post. Now the path, the URL is going to be different for this update. We're going to change this to uh, just post path. So singular post path. And then we want to wrap at post. And then we also want to define the method. Okay, so instead of a post, it's going to be patch. So we want to do colon patch all right and that should do it I believe so let's save that and now let's click edit for this and you'll see we get a form it has our fields let's just change this to the number one click save uh, no oh we didn't add the update action all right so we need to go to our post controller and add update I don't know why I forgot that. So we want to, we want this right here. Okay, and then let's copy this from create. Except it's not going to be post save, it's going to be post update. And then we just need to wrap that post params. Okay, and then redirect to post, or if it doesn't, uh, else then we want to edit we want to render the edit form all right so save that let's try it again save and there we go it was updated all right so we can now update posts now we want to be able to delete them as well so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna add a destroy method here okay Sounds a little harsh. <laughs> We're going to say uh, at post equals post dot find. And then we want the ID, which we can get with params ID. And then we just want to call post dot destroy. And then let's redirect. OK, so we'll redirect to post underscore path. Okay, save that. 
Now we'll need to add a, a, a link to delete. So let's go to our show view and go right under the edit. I'm going to copy that. Okay, let's we'll say delete. Let's change the class to button danger to make it red. And this is going to be right here. Uh, just post path and then pass in the post. And then we're going to add something right here. So we need to define method, which will be delete. And then let's say data. And we can actually add a confirmation to delete right here. We're going to just say um, confirm. And we'll just say, are you sure? All right, so that should give us a confirmation. So let's save it. Okay, we'll go back. Let's create another post. We'll just say test. Oh, needs to be five characters. Okay, now we have that testing post. Let's go ahead and click delete. Are you sure? Okay, and it's gone. So we now have a complete CRUD application. We can create, read, update, and delete posts. So if, if you're tired and you want to stop here, that's fine. But I'm going to continue on, and I want to create comment functionality. All right, we want to be able to uh, submit a comment and read all the comments for each post. So let's go back to the command line. And we want to add a second model of comment. So let's say Rails G model comment, and we'll have a username, which will be a string, and a body, which will be text, and then post, which will be uh, references. All right, because we want to have a relationship between the post and the comment. All right, so this is a, a way to do that. We're, we're assigning post and setting that to references. So let's go ahead and run that. And that's going to create a migration file for us. It's not going to create the actual comment table yet. To do that, we have to say rake db uh, migrate. All right. So now if we go to models and we look at comment, you'll see it has this belongs to post. All right. And that's defining a relationship. A comment belongs to a post. At the same time, we need to add a relationship in our post model. So in here, we want to create a has many. So has underscore many comments. Okay, a post can have many comments. That's the relationship. So let's save that. All right, now to add our routes for our comments, we want to go to config routes. And instead of um, writing out all of our routes, we're going to add it as a resource. But we also want to nest it inside of posts because we want it to go to uh, slash post slash, let's say ID of one. Uh, and then slash uh, comments, okay, whatever that comment ID. So to do that, we're going to, let's see, we're going to say resources posts do. And down here we'll say end. And then in the middle here, we're going to nest resources comments. All right, so let's save that. And now if we go and we say rake routes, you can see that we now have these com see comments create um, and the route is post slash post ID slash comments slash new. OK, so it's nested in that route. All right, so let's close that out. And let's see, I'm just going to close all these out. It's getting a little confusing. All right, so now what we want to do is generate a comments controller. So let's go back here and say Rails G controller comments. All 
All right, and now we want to go to our post show and we want a form here to add a comment. So let's go, let's see, do I want it below these buttons? No, we'll put it, we'll put it ab above, I guess. No, we'll put it below. I'll just put in another HR. All right, so let's put in H3 and we'll say add comment. Okay, I'm going to post this form in, or sorry, paste this form in. Okay, so we have this form for, and then we have post, post.comments.build, and then a username field and a body and a button. So let's save that, reload, and now we have our comment form. So now we want to go to our comments controller, and we're going to add up here, we'll say def create, because that's what it's going to submit to, just like the posts, and say at post equals post.find params ID, and then under that, let's do comment equals post dot comments dot create and then pass in comment params which we'll create in a second and then let's redirect okay redirect to and we want to say post path it's going to be the same page we're on and we just want to pass in here at post all right now let's create this comment params method it's going to be private All right, and just like with the post, we're going to say params dot require. Dot permit. And we just want a username and a body. All right, so let's save that. Now we want to be able to see the comments after we submit them, so let's go back to show our post show and we'll go right above where the comment form is and let's put an h3 here and we'll say comments all right and then here we need to loop through the comments so we'll say post dot comments dot each comment All right, and then in here, let's put a div. We'll give it a class of well. And we just want the username and the, the comment body. So let's put paragraph and we'll do a strong tag. And we'll put the username. So that would be comment dot username all right and then we'll put a colon space comment dot body okay save that all right so let's do username we'll say brad body great post oh i'm getting an error Unexpected keyword end, expecting end of input. Uh, let's see, what did I do? Create, oh, I didn't put the def keyword right here. All right, let's try it again. Nope, still record not found, create. Couldn't find post with ID. Let's see, post dot find, params ID. Oh, 
oh, it's not ID. It's actually going to be post underscore ID. All right, let me make sure everything's okay here. All right, so it looks good as far as I can tell. Third time's the charm, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Reload, and comment's still there. Uh, we'll say thank you. Okay, so we can now comment. Good, and then we can read our comments. So we're just about there. I do want to be able to delete comments, so let's do that real quick. So let's see. Actually, you know what we're going to do is break up these into um, into different views. All right, we do have a views comments folder. So let's grab this and cut it. And then inside uh, views comments, we'll create a file, save it as comments.html dot erb and we'll paste that in and then let's also create in the comments folder a file called comment uh, actually we'll just call it form dot html dot erb okay actually you know what I want I want to um, start it with an underscore because it's a partial so both of these files will just put an underscore Okay, and let's go back to show, and we're going to grab this, cut it, put it in the form, and then inside show, let's do, uh, let's see, we want to do render, I think we can say render article. I'm sorry, not article. Post dot comments. Let's let me see if that works. No, it doesn't. All right, so let's just do the the location, which will be comments slash comments. Okay, so there they are. Now we need the form as well. So this will be comments form. And since it's a partial, and we did have an underscore in the file name, but we don't need to add it here. Okay. So like I said, we're going to do a delete, comment delete. So let's go to our comments partial. And we'll go right after it right here. And I'm just going to paste this in. Okay, so it's a link to, and it's going to say, just, uh, I don't want it to say destroy comment. Let's just give it an, we'll say brackets and an X. All right, and then this will be comment.post. Okay, let's save that. Okay, so now we have these X's. Now it's not going to work yet because we didn't create the destroy. So we'll go to comments, I'm sorry, controllers, comment controller. And let's create destroy. Now I'm going to paste this in to save some time. Okay, we're going to get the post. We're going to get the comment called destroy and redirect. Okay, let's save it. Okay, we'll click the X here. Are you sure? Okay, and it goes away. All right, so we're almost done, I promise. The last thing I want to do is just some basic auth uh, HTTP authentication. Okay, just so no one can come along and just um, delete posts and and um, delete comments all right so or add them for that matter so we want to go to post controller and right under where we define the class we're gonna say HTTP underscore basic underscore authenticate underscore with and let's say name, which will be, uh, we'll say Brad or whatever you want to use. Password, we'll say one, two, three, four. And then say accept. 
Okay, so this pertains to the um, the routes that we want. So we want to have to authenticate on all of them except for index and show. Okay, those are the only ones that um, you should be able to, to go to use without having to authenticate. All right, so pretty simple. Let's save that. And then we want to go to, uh, actually, let me just copy this. And then we'll go to our comments controller and do the same thing. Paste that in. Now for this, instead of using accept, we want to use only. OK, we want to say only destroy. Because we want users to be able to comment and read the comments and all of that without having to authenticate. But we don't want them to be able to destroy. So let's save that. All right, now if I reload and I click create post, you'll see it's asking me for a login. All right, if I don't log in, we get access denied. All right, if we go to read more and go to edit, same thing, we get the login, delete, are you sure? Okay, we get the login. Okay, so we can't do anything except read the posts and comment. All right, now if I log in here, one, two, three, four, log in. Now we can add a post. All right, so we have a nice little blog system. Uh, I know this was a long video. Uh, I tried to get through it as quick as I could, but you'll see there's a lot of information, a lot of the, the core fundamentals of Ruby on Rails. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And this, um, this project is actually based on a project from my full stack web development course which includes um, all kinds of technologies, dozens of front-end and back-end technologies. Um, so you might want to check that out. I also do have a Ruby on Rails course that I'll also add in the, in the description. All right, so I'd appreciate it if you guys could check those out. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.